This is an electric motor. Well, this is a conventional radial flux motor. And as you can see, here are the copper windings, kind of the general layout and footprint. But today, we're at the Mercedes Research and Development Center here in Southern California to talk about this. This is their new axial flux motor. And as you can see from the compact form factor, this thing looks a lot different than that. This is what the windings on this look like. So what are the pros and the cons and how do these actually work? Let's find out. I'm Ricky and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is sponsored by Foreo. Before we talk about an axial flux motor, let's do a quick rundown on how a radial flux motor works. As you can see here, you've got copper windings. Now this is the movable magnet component. And here in the rotor, we have permanent magnets. So here the copper windings run the length of this motor casing. Now to understand how that all works, we have to talk about the right hand rule. So if you take your right hand, put it out like this, your thumb points in the direction of current travel along a wire, and then your fingers would travel along the lines of the magnetic field that is produced. That's the relationship between electricity and magnetism. So in this motor here, this is a radial flux motor because the current flows along the copper windings here. And as a result, if you have the current going this direction, you'd have magnetic field lines in this direction. And then if you reverse that, you'd have magnetic field lines going in this direction. Now the clever bit comes from the fact that you can switch it really quickly and constantly keep the permanent magnets off center and repel and attract and constantly keep it in rotational motion. So you can switch these back and forth, then we'll put a little graphic of how that happens on an electric motor to make that possible. Now to make more power out of a conventional electric motor like this, you just make the motor bigger and bigger, longer and bigger windings. But in the axial world, it's actually much simpler. My name's Tim, so I'm the CTO at Yasser. So we work very closely with Constantine on developing products that are gonna work for next generation Mercedes. So this is, this is one of our production motors. Um, so this is actually used in a, a hybrid vehicle, so it's got a pretty big casing. Do you get a feeling for the size of the, the iron lamination stack, which is maybe 25 kilos, something like this? So this comes down to four kilograms of these uh, magnetic segments. So we get a huge say, weight and space saving on the, on the iron in, in the machine. In this case, this is what the windings look like. This is the copper windings for an axial flux motor. These windings go right in here, and this then would be the stator in the axial flux motor. And then you have these rotors on the outside. And by the way, as we mentioned, the magnetic field lines now travel, right, as they go around the winding but the magnetic field lines are actually along the axis of rotation of the motor, axial flux motors. So the torque that this motor produces is a function of two things, the radius where the force is applied and the size of the force. Also, the force has to be perpendicular to the radius. So for example, you want your force to be applied here as far away from the axis as possible. So the longer the radius away from the center, the higher the torque. And the second thing is the higher the force, the higher the torque. So in a pancake shape, they can achieve this because they can apply these forces further away than they could in a traditional motor. And also you can do it with much less windings. So this then is the power density king. This motor can weigh about a third of the weight as a traditional motor and produce the same amount of energy. The other really amazing benefit is cooling and performance. So if you look here, you can see this cutout. This is a non-metallic, non-interfering casing that they can pump a cooling fluid through to keep the windings really cool. The really important part about electric motors is that you have to keep the copper cool because copper is a great conductor, really low resistance. But as the temperature goes up, so does the resistance. And so as the resistance increases, less efficient, more heat is wasted and it gets hotter and hotter. And at some point when the motor is completely heat soaked, it'll have very little performance. So in the case of the axial motor, you can bind the entire stator and winding assembly and pump coolant all the way through, keeping it really, really cool. Mercedes says they can run this motor for 50 laps around the fastest track in the world and have very little impact to performance at the 50th lap. You'd have the same performance as you did in the first lap. Not exactly the case with the conventional motor. Oh, I almost forgot, I got a gift from my wife. And what better time than now to tell you about our sponsor this week, Foreo. Foreo is the premium Swedish beauty brand that makes some awesome products that might be the perfect gift for that special someone in your life. This is the Foreo Bear, and using Pro-Level, Microcurrent, and T-Sonic Massage, 
The bear improves overall facial contour and reduces signs of aging. The bear goes where traditional skincare can't. The muscles. It stimulates and tones them to firm the skin above for an overall sculpted complexion. 95% of users report their faces look younger and cheekbones more lifted. And who says it's only for the ladies? I'm no spring chicken. And as much time as I spend on camera, I might need to sneak in some treatments myself. It's clinically proven to improve wrinkles, fine lines, skin firmness, and elasticity in just one week. It's also smart, wireless, ergonomically shaped, and 100% waterproof with 10 microcurrent levels. It's premium material materials are sustainable, long-lasting, and hygienic. The smartphone app makes it a breeze to use the different treatments, and you can check it out yourself today. Check out the Ferreo Bear. It might just be the perfect gift for a loved one or yourself. Links in the description. Huge thanks to Ferreo and you for supporting the show. There's other inefficiencies too. First, you have a jacket cooling system from this outer yoke that you need. Also, conventional motors have a lot of wasted material. So for example, this outer yoke here, not needed when you go to a axial flux motor as part of the weight savings. The second is if you look at this, this is probably the most iconic part of any electric motor is the copper windings that you see out here. But this is actually not good. This doesn't produce any extra torque. This is wasted copper. And the reason why they have to bind it and bend it and change direction outside is to have clean magnetic field lines. We mentioned, right? So you want clean magnetic field lines inside where the rotor is. And then to change that winding and bring it back and forth and zigzag back and forth, you want all that to happen out here. So that way the magnetic field lines are kind of muddled out here, but nice and clean inside the rotor. But all that copper is extra weight, extra cost, and it isn't doing anything. These are also much more difficult to cool, and that's why AMG and Mercedes has plans to use axial flux motors for their really high performance line of future AMG Mercedes electric race cars. So the company Yasa actually first started making these for hybrid cars. As you can imagine, if you have a gasoline engine, trying to add a traditional motor to that is a little bit tricky. That's why they're normally side saddled with some kind of a belt or something else to combine the power output. But in the pancake motor case, you can just slap that right after the engine and then everything else fits in. This is a cutaway view, this is so cool. So you might be thinking, well, that's different. There aren't two rotors in the conventional motor. That's right. In the, the Yasa Axial Flux machine, we've got this dual rotor configuration. Um, in, the, in the radial machines, you tend to have an inner, an inner rotor configuration. So one of the really interesting things about having the dual rotors is it means we have a flux path going straight through the stator. So that means we can use some quite special materials to get the magnetic losses very, very low in, in, in the stator in particular. So weight savings, space savings, thinness, better cooling potential, it all sounds pretty amazing. Are there any cons? Well, there are. Remember when I mentioned that the formula is R cross F, the radius times the force is how much torque this motor will produce. That also comes with one other component. The further you are away, the meaning the bigger this pancake is and the further the moving mass is, the faster those rotors are gonna be spinning. And as a result, these rotors are gonna get faster and faster. And typically axial flux motors have lower maximum RPM. So they can't spin as fast as conventional motors. So Tesla's carbon sleeved radial flux motors can easily achieve around 20 to 22,000 RPM of maximum spin speed. And that won't be the case here. These will be less. How much less, we don't know. And Yasa has mentioned that they've made breakthroughs to try to improve that. So that's one of the challenges that you have to account for. Normally electric cars have a single fixed speed and with a really large RPM range to work with, you can go from zero to hundred miles an hour pretty conveniently. But here, in the case of hybrid supercars, you have a transmission, right? If this is a hybrid gasoline engine, electric motor, and then a transmission, that would be fine because this will spin faster than any gas engine. So it won't be a problem and the transmission can be changed for any speed you want. But since this has a lower RPM range, you'll probably have to make some decisions. For one, they are really torque dense, so maybe you just gear them differently. Also, if your top speed is 100 miles an hour, this isn't a problem. But I'm sure Mercedes is cooking up some AMG EVs That'll do 200 and 240 miles an hour. So to go from zero to 240 miles an hour with a single speed, you have to make decisions about how tall that gearing ratio is. But these are all problems and challenges that you have to work around. And the benefits of the axial flux motor, to my mind, still are way, way more than any of the drawbacks. So all that's to say the axial flux motor is two to three times as torque dense for the same weight. So here, I can pick that up, probably about 20 kilograms. Now, if we come over here to the radial flux motor, same power output, about tw twice to three times as heavy. 
<laughs> no, I am. No, that's a little bit too heavy for me. Now, these are still way more power dense than any internal combustion car. An internal combustion engine of this power output would probably weigh 350 to 400 pounds. And then there's a transmission. All that would be gone here but the axial flux takes that to another level. Now, all this is to say, we're going to have radial and axial flux motors in the future. There is a place and a time for both. They both have their benefits. And currently axial flux motors are gonna be more expensive because the companies that do the windings, that build the machines to do all these things are way more mature in this world than in that. But over the years, as more manufacturers start to build machines to build these windings and to start making components for these axial flux motors, the cost will come down. There's nothing exotic. There's nothing different about the materials needed or the processes or anything else. There are some really key material science breakthroughs that make these possible. But as far as like cost long term, these will be just as cost effective as radial flux motors with all those other benefits that we mentioned. Also, just think how much more you could do if this is all the space that it took to build these in your car. Imagine future cars with four axial flux motors on the wheels instead of a couple of those. A traditional radial flux motor, if you put two of those, like in Tesla's Model S Plaid, that has a tri-motor layout, two of those would take up an immense amount of space. But this could be way more packaging efficient. And just think how big frunks and trunks and interior compartments could be if all of your motor was just this big. Pretty amazing stuff. Now, long term, the plan is to use these Yasa axial flux motors for their AMG line of really high performance electric cars. And I don't know about you, but axial flux motors, AMG, electric, yes, please. All of those things and as many as you can make. This is not going to be a cheap car. Of course, it's a Mercedes. These are iconic things. But for a company of this magnitude to be developing technology like this, it just means that much more. All right, that's a quick look at the axial flux motor and how it all works. Thank you so much for watching. If that was cool, check out this video next.